Hello everyone and welcome you all to the another wonderful lecture on photosynthesis. So today we are going to discuss chemiosmotic theory for synthesis of ATP in the chloroplast. Now this theory it was given by the scientist Mitchell. Now what is the force for synthesis of ATP? Force is proton gradient. Now in the chloroplast there is formation of ATP which is linked to development of a proton gradient across the thylakoid membrane. Now how this gradient is formed we have to discuss this in detail. Now this is not chloroplast, this is a single thylakoid. Now this is thylakoid membrane. Now inside is thylakoid lumen and outer side represents stroma. Now in the thylakoid membrane several complexes they are present which are involved in electron transport system. Now this is complex 2 or you can say this is photosystem 2. Now to the photosystem 2 on the inner side there is attachment of water splitting complex. Now in photosystem 2 reaction center it is formed by P680 along with that several components they are present and one we have to learn here that is pheophytin. It is a colorless chlorophyll present inside photosystem 2. Then you can see plastoquinone. Now this is not part of photosystem 2, it is a mobile carrier present in thylakoid membrane. Then cytochrome BF complex. Now this complex is also involved in electron transport system. Now this contains iron, that's why it is red in color. Now it has cytochrome B6 and cytochrome F, that's why you call it as cytochrome B6F complex. Then you can see here another mobile carrier that is plastocyanin. Now plastocyanin can move within the thylakoid membrane. It is blue in color because presence of copper. Then comes photosystem 1. In photosystem 1, there's presence of P700 as reaction center. It contains FES, several other components they are also present. And then you can see to it, there is attachment of ferrodoxin, which is loosely attached to it. So if a question is asked here, how many mobile carriers they are associated with electron transport system, then what is the answer? Answer is 2 for this, that is plastoquinone and plastocyanin. Earlier scientists, they used to think that ferrodoxin is also a mobile carrier, but now it is clarified. It is not a mobile carrier, it is loosely attached to photosystem 1 towards the outer side. Now, if you look at the position of water splitting complex and ferrodoxin, positions are totally different. Yes, water splitting complex, water splitting complex, it is attached to photosystem 2 towards the inner side of the thylakoid membrane. However, ferrodoxin, it is attached to photosystem 1 but towards the outer side of thylakoid membrane. Then in the thylakoid membrane, there is also presence of an enzyme which is involved in synthesis of NADPH, that is NADP reductase. Then how we can forget this component? Yes, it is the one which is going to form ATP. It is known as ATPase complex. Now it is also known as F0F1 complex. Now this complex is also present in mitochondria. Yes, to differentiate complex of mitochondria with that of chloroplast, here you are going to call it as CF0 F1 complex. So C here represent it is of chloroplast origin. Now we are going to start this, how electron flow is going to occur, which will ultimately lead to the synthesis of ATP. Now the story begins with P680. When a photon of light is absorbed by P680, there is extrusion of electron and that electron is accepted by pheophytin. Now once electron is extruded from P680, it will acquire positive charge. It means it will become electron deficient. Now from pheophytin, now electron is transported to plastoquinone. Now plastoquinone, it accepts both electrons as well as hydrogen ion. But you can see here very well that photosystem 2, it is only going to provide electron to plastoquinone. So who is going to give hydrogen ion? Hydrogen ion is going to come from stroma. Yes, it will accept hydrogen ion from stroma. So it will accept electron from photosystem 2, hydrogen ion from stroma and it is changed into reduced state. Now 
from plastoquinone on now electron is transported to cytochrome complex now in cytochrome complex there is a carrier which can accept electron but it cannot accept hydrogen ion so what is going to be the fate of hydrogen ion now these hydrogen ion they are going to be released in the thylakoid lumen yes yes listen to this here again from plastoquinone electrons will be taken up by cytochrome bf complex but it cannot take up hydrogen ions so hydrogen ions they will be ultimately released in thylakoid lumen so what you can say here that due to light energy there is transport of electron but along with the electron transport there is transport of proton that is from stroma to lumen that's why concentration of proton in thylakoid lumen it will increase now what are you going to say that this movement of hydrogen ion it is passive or it is active process surely there is requirement of energy that is light energy so that's why you are going to say this is active process it means there is pumping of hydrogen ion from stroma to thylakoid lumen along with the transport of electron now from cytochrome bf complex now electrons they are transferred to plastocyanin Yes, plastocyanin. It is a mobile carrier which is going to take up electron. Yes, from plastocyanin, now electron is transported to P seven hundred. Now, when photon of light it is absorbed by P six eighty, it is quite simple. At the same time, photon of light will also be absorbed by P seven hundred, so that from P seven hundred electron is transported to FES. Your FES is part of photosystem one. You can call it as primary electron acceptor of photosystem one. And for photosystem two, who is the primary electron acceptor? It is pheophytin. From FES, electron is transported to ferrodoxin. From ferrodoxin, electrons will be transported to NADP reductase. Now, NADP reductase it contains FAD plus. Now FAD plus it takes up two electron from ferrodoxin and two molecule of ferrodoxin actually, and it takes up hydrogen ion from stroma. So it is changed into FADH two. So NADP reductase it contains FADH two which takes two electron from ferrodoxin and two hydrogen ion from stroma, and it is changed into FADH two. Finally, NADP reductase it is going to give electrons and hydrogen ion to NADP plus, but NADP plus can accept only two electron and one hydrogen ion. So, what is going to happen? NADP plus is going to be changed into NADPH, not NADPH two, and that hydrogen ion which is associated with this enzyme that is going to be released as hydrogen ion. So you are going to sum it up as NADPH plus hydrogen ion, that is H plus ion, right? Now, once electrons they are extruded from P six eighty, now P six eighty is going to become electron deficient. It will acquire negative charge to fulfill the deficiency of P six eighty plus. Electrons will be provided by water and Splitting of water is going to be associated with the help of this water splitting complex. Splitting of water will be done by water splitting complex, which is associated with photosystem two. Now, from water, one electron is transported to P six eighty. Yes, listen to this carefully. From water, one electron is transported to P six eighty plus. Now, once P six eighty plus accept electron, its deficiency is fulfilled, right? Now, what is going to happen? It is now again ready to take up light energy. It is again ready to absorb photon of light. It will absorb photon of light. It will release electron, which will again enter ETS. So, you should not think. That all the electrons from water will be taken up by P six eighty plus simultaneously. Yes, it will take up electron one by one depending upon the requirement. Listen to this again. Yes, P six eighty 
plus when it will take electron from water it is going to become reduced and once it will absorb photon of light this electron is transferred to this ETS it is transported to this ETS again it has become electron deficient so what is going to happen again it is going to take electron from water so one by one electron from water they are transferred to P680 plus the question arises here for splitting two water molecules yes please listen to this question carefully for splitting two water molecules how many photons of light they are required for splitting two water molecules yes four electrons needs to be transported through this ETS for transport of one electron how many photons are required for transport of one electron two photons are required why because one photon is required for the activation of photosystem 2 and one for the activation of photosystem 1 so for transport of one electron you require two photons so it is quite simple for transport of four electrons eight photons are required so for breakdown of two water molecules you require eight photons and this is going to release yes four hydrogen ion and one oxygen molecule and where these are going to be released these are released in thylakoid lumen fine now due to all this proton gradient has been formed that is hydrogen ion concentration in the stroma is less however in the thylakoid lumen is more and this has resulted due to three factors one due to splitting of water a splitting of water results in accumulation of hydrogen ion in the thylakoid lumen secondly plastoquinone it pumps hydrogen ion from stroma to thylakoid lumen plastoquinone pump is also very important and third NADP reductase it utilizes hydrogen ion from stroma for forming NADPH if in the stroma hydrogen ions they are used for forming NADPH so it is quite simple in stroma concentration of hydrogen ion decreases so this forms proton gradient yes we have formed proton gradient here and you must not forget that three factors they are responsible for formation of proton gradient one photolysis of water towards thylakoid lumen transfer of hydrogen ion from stroma to lumen yes this is done by plastoquinone then NADPH reductase reaction occurs towards stroma which consumes hydrogen ion for forming NADPH so at the end we are going to take up one question here chemiosmotic hypothesis for generation of ATP during light reaction was first explained by it was first explained by the scientist Mitchell you also call it as Mitchell theory so our right answer to this question is option number three now till now I have formed proton gradient in the next part of this lecture I will be telling you how this proton gradient will be used for synthesis of ATP